In today's Solving Basics for Trig Equations, we're going to solve the equation cosine theta equals the positive square root of 3 over 2. And so our note to ourself is going to be to think which angle or angles have a cosine of square root of 3 over 2. Um, if you are familiar with finding exact values, this process for solving equations is very similar to that. You're just working in the other direction. Um, I'll post a playlist with some examples of finding exact values if you're interested in that. But here we go, let's solve this equation. All right, here's our outline. In step one, we'll analyze, we'll find which quadrants our angles will be in, and we'll also find the reference angle and triangle that we'll be working with. And then these two things together in our analysis step will help us synthesize in step two our angle answers. So let's go ahead and find now how to solve cosine theta equals positive square root three over two. The first part of our analysis step is to find which quadrants we're in, and we're going to do this with the acronym ASTC. Think all students take classes. And this acronym helps us recall which trig functions are positive in each quadrant. So label starting in quadrant one and working your way around, all students take classes, or ASTC. And this helps us remember that all trig functions are positive in the first, the S tells us that sine and its reciprocal cosecant are the only ones positive in quadrant two. In quadrant three, the T tells us it's tangent and its reciprocal cotangent that are positive. And in quadrant four, the positive trig functions are cosine from the C, and then it also its reciprocal secant. So looking at our equation, we see the cosine of an angle theta equals a positive value, positive square root three over two. So our answers are going to be in the quadrants where cosine is positive. So that means quadrant one, where they're all positive, and quadrant four, where cosine is positive. So let's go ahead and sketch in those angles. One angle in quadrant one, one angle in quadrant four, and that's part of what we need for our final answer. The second thing we want to do is find our reference triangle. And to do this, we need to recall how cosine and our special right triangles work on the unit circle. So remember that cosine is going to be our x coordinate when our special right triangles are used on the unit circle. So that means we want the x coordinate to be square root 3 over 2. So I like to think of that meaning the special right triangle that has the longer leg as its horizontal leg. So that's this special right triangle here. If you need any help reviewing special right triangles and how they work on the unit circle, check the video description. There will be a playlist for unit circle basics and um, there are review videos for all of the special right triangles. But here we go. This is our special right triangle with the longer horizontal leg, square root of three over two. And that special right triangle is the 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. And we really care about the central angle here, this 30 degree angle. So that is going to be our reference angle. And likely, if you're solving trig equations, you're going to want to express your answer in radians. So we'll go ahead and convert 30 degrees to be pi over 6. And we're going to use this angle, this pi over 6 angle, as our reference angle for our angles in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4. And remember, a reference angle is simply the amount of rotation from the terminal side of your angle, which is what we sketched, to the x-axis, and so that's why I showed it in both places there in orange. So now that we've found these two pieces, we're ready to synthesize this information and we're ready for step two. Let's state our angle answers. And so we're going to be figuring out how to name these angles in each quadrant. Let's start with our quadrant one angle. That one's pretty easy because if the reference angle shown in orange there is pi over six, here's our angle in light blue, that is pi over six radians of rotation. So we know that one of our angle answers is going to be pi over six. Now, you can check yourself here if you just wanna make sure if you solve or substitute pi over six back in to the equation, you get cosine of pi over six equals positive root three over two. And your knowledge of exact values will allow you to know that that is true. So this answer is correct. So now we're ready to find our quadrant four angle. Now, if you know your unit circle really well, you may just know that um, we can name the angle in quadrant four with a pi over six reference angle 
to be 11 pi over 6. So if you can jump there, that's great. We know that that's the angle in quadrant 4 with a reference angle of pi over 6. If you need some help finding that, I would recommend noting that we would sketch this angle here in dark blue like this. So we rotate almost a full rotation, which would be 2 pi. But so that it has a common denominator with our reference angle with that pi over 6, I would rewrite 2 pi as 12 pi over 6. And then to find that 11 pi over 6, which is our answer, you can simply subtract 1 pi over 6 from 12 pi over 6 to get 11 pi over 6, which is our second answer. Substitute it back into the equation if you want to double check. We know that the cosine of 11 pi over 6 is going to be positive root 3 over 2. So these would be our two solutions if you were asked to solve this equation on the interval 0 to 2 pi, or sometimes you hear for angles on the unit circle. And so if that's all you need, then you're done. Another way you may be asked to solve this equation would be solve this for all solutions, for all solutions, or find all solutions. And that means we're going to have to slightly modify our previous answers into two solution equations. Um, and these are pretty easy to write. Um, we already substituted each answer back in to know that substituting those in makes the equation true. Um, but we also need to recall coterminal angles, which are angles that share the same terminal side. So for example, if pi over 6 is an answer, well, if you rotate a full rotation around to the coterminal angle, which would actually be 13 pi over 6, well, that's a solution as well, because the cosine of 13 pi over 6 is also positive square root 3 over 2. So these solution equations are basically going to say the answers that we have and also all of the coterminal angles to those answers. So we'll do this first with our quadrant 1 angle. We say theta equals pi over 6 plus 2 pi k where k is any integer, and depending on which integer you substitute in, you'll get a different angle that's coterminal to the original pi over 6. And we use 2 pi, remember, because 2 pi is a full rotation of a circle in radians. All right, so that's one equation that would be for all solutions. And we'd also write a similar one for that quadrant 4 angle. So that's right here, this 11 pi over 6. So we say theta equals 11 pi over 6 plus 2 pi k. And that gets 11 pi over 6 and all its coterminal angles. All right, so that's how we can solve this basic trig equation, cosine theta equals positive square root 3 over 2. Be sure to check the video description if you want um, links to more worked out examples. Um, and thanks so much for watching.